Stop talking yourself out of making more money. Hey, it's Heather Chauvin, wife, mother of three boys, former social worker, dreamer, recovering rescuer, stage four cancer survivor. I started my motherhood journey when I was 18. I was single and living off government assistance. Beyond all of these titles and labels, I'm a human being, just like you, attempting to navigate it all while feeling good. My goal on this podcast is to show you that you can live an energized, sustainable life, both at home and in your work. On this show, I attempt to keep it real with stories, interviews, and random thoughts. This is not a business or career podcast, and it's not a parenting podcast. It's both and so much more. You will laugh, you will cry, and maybe even get a little frustrated with the truth you've been hiding from yourself. I believe all human behavior is a language, whether it's through your child's behavior, your health, or a relationship. And when we learn to listen instead of react, we begin to understand what it truly means to feel alive and in control. If you haven't already, go grab a copy of my book, Dying to Be a Good Mother. You can purchase it wherever books are sold online. And if you're interested in how to integrate this work into your life and get quicker results, you can learn more about my mastery and mastery business coaching experiences at heatherchauvin.com forward slash work with me. Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N dot com forward slash work with me. And you have a personal question or a topic you'd like me to answer on this podcast, then text me 313-710-5199. 313-710-5199. All right, let's change your life. Let's dig in. Hey, ladies, I am back. And we're going to see where today's conversation goes. But before I dive into today's conversation, I just want to let you know that I've been having some amazing conversations with you, podcast listeners, um, and people on my text messaging app. So if you're not on the text message, I go in these spurts of like, you know, where I use it for certain things. Um, You can always opt out at any time. But right now, I've just been doing it for connection and just to pick your brain and to get to know, like, where are you struggling at? What's going on? Um, And then it helps me create more podcast content because that's what I'm focused on. You know, get more guest experts that are in alignment with your pain points. And so I'm all about connection. Connection is a huge value for me. It's how I live my life. It's how I run my business. It's how I teach my clients because if, you know, we're not connected, we're disconnected. And the world definitely doesn't need any more disconnected people. So if you are interested in, um, you know, being a part of the text messaging app, I might send out like one text a week. And if we have something bigger coming up where you're going to get more text messages, I usually allow you, I usually ask for your permission and say opt in, you know, text me back with this number. So like you might get one text a week from me. Um, and then you can just delete it if you want or unsubscribe at any time. So text me as a podcast listener, three, one, three, seven, 10, 51, 99. And just say, Hey, I just listened to today's podcast. It really inspired me. Let me know. And I will reply back eventually. Um, cause the list is getting bigger and bigger. That said, After you've texted me, if you've been sitting on the fence and curious, like, what is Heather all about? How does she create transformation for people? I'm hosting an open house um, where I'm going to dive deep into my coaching. You're not required to work with me at all. Um, It's more of like, you know, just imagine going to an open house for your kid's school. You want to learn more about it. You want to meet the teachers. You want to get a vibe for the school. Be like, hmm, do I like these people? What's the energy here? That's what I'm going to be talking about. And I'm also going to show you our curriculum. And I'm also going to show you how women get in their way. So, um, and how you can do this both personally and professionally. So head on over to heatherchauvin.com forward slash work with me. The details are all there. Again, if you have questions, just reach out, just text me. Okay. Stop with the money shit. 
I'm saying this as a recovering saboteur. And what I mean by that is somebody who like, you know, I got into business talking about parenting and we all have like deeply rooted parenting beliefs because of how we were raised. And then it was health and then it was, you know, time management and then it was blah, 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 right? Pulling back the curtains. But oh my, those money beliefs, those money wounds, that shit runs deep. And it doesn't matter who I'm talking to, how much money they've made, guess what? New level, new freaking devil, right? New level, new devil. And this week on the podcast, or sorry, in the text messaging app, I've been, I asked a question about stories and it's like, what's the, what's your go-to story of why you can't do something? And I would literally coach people through that story. And it's like, but what if this happens? What if, what if, what if? And it's like, oh shit, whose story is this? One of my clients said to me this week, and I was like, that is so freaking genius. Um, She's like, yeah, when this story comes up now, I just ask myself, whose story is this? Oh, gosh, that's my dad's story. That's my brother's story. That's my aunt's story. It's my mom's story. Oh, wow, that's not even my story. So when you have awareness of whose story you're actually telling, you can drop it. You're like, oh, that's not mine to keep. That was my mom's. Okay, that's my mom's story. That's not my story. So stop. Stop blocking yourself from receiving more money. So I want to tell you, um, you know, on Thursdays, I like to do business focused podcasts. And inside of our mastery business program, I focus a lot on receiving money. It's not as easy as people think. It actually is easy. But the work, there's a lot of emotional work because, you know, you buy into these programs, they're like, do this funnel, do this, do this, do this. Well, guess what? Business is not a one size fits all. And if you aren't doing the work, the inner work, you're not going to receive the damn money. You're not going to receive it, right? You like create the perfect funnel. You have the email sequence, you whatever. Like I did all the marketing, Heather, I have the perfect website, but nobody's coming in and I'm having a really hard time with client attraction. And maybe that's your thing. Okay. So then once you figure out how to get the clients, maybe you're like, damn, I have so many clients, but like, I don't know how to like convert them. Like I can't get them in. Or maybe you're like, Heather, it's not that it's just, you know, I've capped myself and I'm at full capacity and I'm whatever. Everyone has a different pain point, different area of the process. My point is I want to share a story about buying a new car. Okay. So we all have stories and I, I have personal stories and beliefs around buying cars. Buying cars to me feels very gross. It's, I definitely in my head as a female have that like gross car salesman, you know, getting ripped off vibe. That does not feel good when you're about to walk into a dealership and, and purchase something. That is not the way that I do business. Yes, my programs are a large investment, but it's like, here's the value, right? And it's not about manipulating people. It's about being honest and holding space for them. And I'm going to, men don't always do this well because you have to have emotional intelligence to really hold sacred space. But men make more money than women. This is known because I believe their confidence level is higher and they just, Not that they don't give a shit, but it's just like they go for it. We're females. I believe the female brain overthinks things. But I do believe when we can harness our superpowers, which is our nurturing aspect, when we can bring this into business, we can make magic happen. My point, we go into a dealership to buy a new car. Now, as a consumer, I don't need a new car, okay? I do not need a new car. My car is... 11 years old, but it's, I love it to pieces. They don't make my car anymore. Currently I owned a, I own a Land Rover LR4. Okay. They don't make this car anymore. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Now I walk into the Land Rover dealer. I know I also don't have currently have a car payment. So I'm going to walk into this dealership and what are they going to do? They're going to, you know, upsell me and I'm probably going to leave having a, a car payment. 
So I'm not used to having a car payment, right? And a, an 11 to 12 year old vehicle, Land Rover, that is no longer made is there is a market for it, but I mean, what I could get for this car is not anywhere near what I would get for a new one or one that's comparable. So I had so many objections and, but to be honest, to be really, really honest with you, it's stepping into who I want to be, like the vehicle I want to drive and giving myself permission to want what I want. Okay. So that's number one, but I don't need a car this second. But I know that when this car breaks down or something happens to it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost me something big. So I just, I'm, I, I'm kind of doing my research right now so that when I'm ready, I'm going to pull the trigger. So we've been looking, right? You go, you look, you look, you tap in, look, look, look. And knowing that I run a business, it, they probably could have got me to sign the papers and get a new vehicle already. But they didn't, not because they weren't good at sales. They weren't good at listening. Not because they weren't good at sales. It's because they weren't good at listening and being able to hold space and to get out of their own damn fucking way. So the story, I could tell that our salesperson had money shit because of the way he dressed, how he presented himself, but also how he was actually not showing me the vehicles that I wanted to step into. He was showing me something based on how I was dressed and what he assumed I did for a living. Like, oh, you got young kids, you got this, like, okay, you want a seven seater, like, oh, your car's old, like, you know, like all this assumptions, right? But what he didn't know was that when I upgrade in my life, I upgrade in my life. And it's raising your standards, raising your self-respect and not giving a fuck what people think when you make an investment in yourself. So he didn't even show me the vehicle that I was kind of thinking about because he didn't give me a chance to speak. And when he didn't give me a chance to speak, I was quiet and I got really, really, you know, in, right? I went in and What I noticed was, of course, he's having this conversation with my husband and my husband kept turning to me and saying, she's the one buying, she's the one buying, like you're looking at the wrong person. So right there, I'm losing the no like and trust, right? I'm like, "Mm, no, he doesn't have me. He's, there's no connection here, right? There's a disconnect, not my person. And he didn't ask me like, what do I want? What's my objection? Like, tell me more. Um, Because to be honest with you, letting go of this vehicle that I'm in currently is about letting go of this, of what's no longer serving me, but also what this vehicle meant to me. And this car that I am, actually I'm currently podcasting in the car, but this car that I own, I bought six years ago. And it was the first car that I wanted. And I did it with my own damn money. And I did it on my own terms. And nobody else thought I should buy this brand of car. And I was like, I don't care what you think. This is about what I think and what I want. And it was on my terms. Um, And a At that time, it was so outside of my personal comfort zone financially, and I didn't think I was capable of it. And I, so I made the investment and I did the work and I grew into it because I'm a risk taker and I love being challenged, but I like taking smart risk. So it was just emotionally uncomfortable and I grew into it. It was like I expanded into it, right? So my point of why I'm saying that is because I just feel that expansion coming and And I'm just looking, I'm just looking, but he wasn't listening. He wasn't listening. And when people aren't listening, 
you you think they don't care, but they actually do. But what's happening is their stories are getting in the way. And I think about this a lot when it comes to conscious parenting. I was having this conversation with my husband and I said, you know, when I'm talking to women about conscious parenting and how to hold space for a child that's having a meltdown and a tantrum, it's the exact same thing as having a conversation when somebody wants to work with you and you tell them the price and then they freak the fuck out. Because when, do you know how to hold space for somebody who's wildly uncomfortable? Like how do you react when somebody is wildly uncomfortable in your presence? Do you just hold space and you're like, I got you, I got you. Or do you try to rescue them? right? Do you try to rescue them and run in and be like, Oh my God, let me take your pain away. Oh my God, let me take your pain away. Like I got, this is so emotionally uncomfortable. Let me do something about it. Or do you persecute them? Do you blame them? And you're like, don't make me feel that way. Don't yell at me. Right? We do this in our relationships. Or do you play the victim and say, Oh my God, Oh my God, there you go again. Oh my God, there you go again. Poor me, I always have to listen to your shit, right? Why do you always have to project on me? Why do you always have to yell at me? You play the victim. We do this in the sales conversation too, in our businesses. And this is why I'm a huge fan of emotional intelligence and emotional freedom. And it's the foundation of what I teach. Because when you're sitting there and holding space for somebody, and it, let's just, it could be a $10 product, You walk in, they walk into a store, you own a brick and mortar store and you are, you're selling $10 toothpaste. I don't know about you, but I've never paid $10 for toothpaste. Maybe, who knows? But that feels like a premium toothpaste, right? $10 for a tube of toothpaste. So if I'm in your store and I'm looking at this tube of toothpaste, I'm like, wow, the marketing, you know, the branding's really nice. I look at it. I'm like, holy shit, this is 10 bucks. And I'm projecting, right? I'm like, wow, that's, that's really steep. And I'm getting a little passive aggressive and you come over and you, you're like, Hey, can I help you with something? And I'm like $10 for toothpaste, you know? And it, it's how you react. And that other person might go, Well, you know, it costs a lot to run a store, right? Persecutor, victim. You know, it costs a lot to run a store. Like if you only knew, like we're just a small business over here and everyone else is running us out. So we had to like up our prices. I'm going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Like, wow, you just puked your crap all over me. All right. I might buy your toothpaste because I feel bad, but I'm not going to leave feeling good. Right. But if you came up to me and you were like, yeah, yeah have you tried this toothpaste? I'm like, no, I haven't. I'm kind of angry and low. And I'm like, ew, like $10 toothpaste. That's a lot of money. And then you say to me, have you seriously, have you tried this though? I thought 10 bucks was ridiculous too. And I got this sample and we actually have samples and I even have like sample toothbrushes and there's a bathroom right there. Like, do you want to try it? Cause I guarantee you you're going to, you're all, you're going to see the difference. And I'm like, this woman is crazy. All right. Show me the sample. Give me, you know, your little bamboo free toothbrush, like whatever, go in the bathroom and I'm brushing my teeth. And what are my pain points? Maybe I feel like my teeth are a little yellow. Maybe they feel grimy. Maybe I, I want like a certain flavor. Um, You know, maybe I, you know, another pain point around toothpaste would be that it's healthy. I want it to be healthy and clean. I want it to be proactive. I want it to be uh, like adding good things to my body. Um, Who knows? Maybe it's got some natural lip lip plumper in it or or gum plumper in it. I don't fucking know. But let's just say I I go and try it out and I'm like, holy shit. Like I feel it now it bubbles and like, it like flosses your teeth at the same time. And then I walk away and I'm like, is this a fake mirror? Because like my teeth look whiter. My smile looks brighter. I feel like, like a little lift. And she goes, oh yeah. And then when you, you know, when you swallow it or if anything goes in, all of those nutrients are going into your gums and that's actually like probiotic. And then the probiotic creates better circulation. I don't know. I'm making shit up. 
So she's like, you don't have to buy this, 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 this. And oh, by the way, you can use a pea size. So this tube of toothpaste will actually last you like a year where your typical grocery store toothpaste will last you, I have no idea, guys, a month, right? And you just use a little tiny, tiny pea and blah, 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 blah. So really it's cheaper, blah, blah, blah. And she's showing me the value and she's handling my objection. I would walk out of there and be like, oh my God. 10 bucks is a steal of a deal. All because she wasn't reacting to my emotional state. She was holding the boundary for me, right? She was holding the boundary. And she said, you know, she in her energy, she was saying, I see you. I see that like you're triggered. And I'm just going to I'm just going to hold this energy. I'm going to hold this conversation. And I'm just going to show you the value so that you can see the value. And I'm just going to sit here with you and I'm going to show you the value and I'll answer your questions and I'll keep showing you the value and I'm just going to hold space and I'm not attached if you buy the toothpaste or not. And then at the end of the conversation, if I was kind of like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I have like five tubes of toothpaste at home though. And she was like, you know what? I'm going to give you a tube of toothpaste or here's five samples. Let your whole family try it. Come back. Let me know. Um, and you know what? Is it okay if I actually text you and just ask you how the toothpaste went? And I'd be like, oh my God, you're going to text me about toothpaste. And she's like, yeah, we're going to text you about toothpaste. Then you know what's going to happen? Like literally she puts a little ringer on her CRM or her whatever the hell she does to just check in with me. And she texts me three days later and she's like, Hey, how did that toothpaste go? And I'm like, honestly, we all love it. She's like, great. I'm going to ship some to your house. How many tubes do you want? And I'm like, give me three tubes. Not only did she sell me on a $10 tube of toothpaste, she sold me on, she sold me like three times as much. And then she was like, what else do you need? And I'm like, you know what? When I was in your store, I saw this, 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 this. And then again, she answers those questions, answers those questions. And my life changes. She's not responsible for my buying decisions. She's not responsible for my budgeting. She's not responsible for how many tubes of toothpaste I have already in my bathroom. She's just responsible to help me solve my goddamn problems. And I'm a big ass girl and I can say yes or no to my spending. But here's the point. We all want to be seen, we want to be heard, and we want to be understood. When you see people, when you understand them, and when you hear them, they feel connection. There's no manipulation in there. That is called transformation. Manipulation comes in the stories that we tell ourselves about control and patriarchy and how things have been done. But as a female-led business owner, you are not here you're like we're 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 creating our our new normal. We're creating our new sense of leadership. So, that is my long rant for you today about how you're literally cutting off receiving more money. Um, I hope it was of service to you. I've been at this for a really long time. We teach this inside of our mastery business program. It is something I'm extremely passionate about and have become more passionate about. So. I want to hear from you and I want to know about your business. I have absolutely no attachment to whether we work together a lot or not. But if you are freaking struggling and you're like, I'm at my wits ends, Heather, I like text me 313-710-5199 and just tell me what's going on. I want to know what business you're in. I want to know where you're getting stuck. Um, Because my highest value is that you get the support that you need And because when you are in alignment and you're feeling amazing and you're feeling full and abundant, um, you know what happens? You change the world. So regardless if you ever spend a dime with me and somehow listening to my podcast and me giving you value via text message or podcast or my book or whatever it is, and all of a sudden like you make a bigger impact in the world and you help more people and maybe you're passing on a little gem that I taught you, that to me is worth more than anything you could ever give me because that's impact. And that's literally like that just brings me so much joy. So I'm here to serve. I'm here to help. 
text me 313-710-5199. If you are in business or you're trying to start your business, it doesn't matter what level of business you're at. We serve different levels. Um, and I want to know where you're at. Have you hit a plateau? Are you hitting an upper limit? Tell me what's working, what's not working. But either way, know that the sacredness that you hold in that relationship of that conversation, when somebody you're trying to create that transformation for somebody, um, whether it's a product, a service, a house, like it doesn't matter. Um, and conscious parenting, they're literally parallel and very connected. So I'm excited to hear from you. Well, that's it. And I wanted to thank you for listening today because I truly believe you are exactly where you need to be. And now I have a favor to ask. In exchange for the value you've gained from this free podcast, I'd be forever grateful if you would leave us a review on iTunes. Share the show with at least one woman in your life who you feel would benefit and or take a screenshot and share it on social media. And always feel free to tag me at Heather Chauvin. The world does not benefit from your guilt and fatigue. The world needs more women who are willing to unlearn everything they've been taught. Women who are courageous enough to feel good and not let guilt run the show. I believe you are that courageous woman. To see if my community and coaching is the right fit for you and your big vision, the relationships you desire, the money, time, energy that you know deep down you are capable of creating, then head on over to Heather chauvin.com forward slash work with me that's heather chauvin c-h-a-u-v-i-n.com forward slash work with me and take the next step in the right direction taking a stand for how you feel means you are taking a stand for how your your children show up as adults and if you have a personal question or topic you'd like me to answer on the podcast text me 313-710-5199. You are so worthy of feeling good. Now go do some scary shit.